All right, the difference a day makes, man. It was freezing yesterday. Uh, I'm back at it today. We are going to start building the modular panels to put this chicken coop together. I don't think I'm going to get through all of them, but I'll put a video together here today just kind of showing my process and showing um, how I plan on putting this panel together. All right. Let's just get right into it. Uh, I, I don't know how much talking I'm going to do today just because I want to get a lot done. So if I feel like the video is not explaining something on its own, uh, maybe I'll come back and do a little voiceover. We'll see. Um, this is the first thing I'm recording today. So, all right, let's get to work. As I get my materials ready, I just want to let you know that the way I purchased this material is maybe not exactly how the cuts turned out to be. This is a combination of availability of materials as well as trying to use as little material as possible or at least I should say reduce as much scrap as possible. For example, I want the walls of this coop to be about six feet in height, but I don't want to uh, cut them out of eight foot boards because I'm just going to end up with a mountain of, of two foot scraps. So instead I'm going to go ahead and use two by twelves that I can cut in half to get my six foot walls. Now if you go to certain lumber shops or even like a Home Depot or something like that, you can find two by four by sixes. But if you compare the prices, a lot of times you get a better deal just buying a two by twelve and cutting it in half. I'm guessing they're taking advantage of a lot of people who maybe don't have a pickup truck or the ability to transport something that long. But if you have a truck, uh, you can probably get it home. And if you have a trailer, you can definitely get it home. And you know, you're, you're not saving a lot of money, you're maybe saving 50 cents or something, but it adds up. So something I try to do is measure the 2x4 first to see how much the board was overcut by, and that lets me know how much of the ends I can trim off before I cut it into the smaller pieces that I need. It's important to remember that you're working with rough cut lumber here. Well, it's, it is smoothed on all four sides, but the length of them tends to be roughly cut. What that means is sometimes you can get at least an eight foot board, but sometimes it's eight and a quarter, sometimes eight and a half. So you never want to assume that you have exactly 96 inches. I think I got enough pieces cut here to at least get started. You're going to notice there's a theme here and that is cost. Let, let me show you what I'm talking about. So you'll notice there's different colors of wood here. We have this lighter wood, we have this kind of tan colored wood, this sort of greenish wood. So basically what we're looking at is this right here is what you would call white wood at like a Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards. It's just untreated, probably Douglas fir or something like that, or a white pine. Right next to it, that's a pressure treated southern yellow pine. Now these were slightly more expensive than, than those 2x4x8s here, but we did need a couple because those are going to be in contact with the ground. These here were slightly cheaper, so I'm going to go ahead and build as much of the top framing as, as possible with these. However, the 2x4x12s in the pressure treated was actually cheaper than getting untreated. So it just goes to show that the prices of lumber, really, they're still fluctuating right now. They're going crazy. Sometimes you can get pressure treated cheaper than untreated. Sometimes it's the other way around. I would say, as always, you want to price shop and make sure you're getting the best deal you can at the time that you're buying this. Now, I'll probably go through a whole price list when I'm done building this thing, but the fact is I'm still buying stuff. It, it wouldn't be a DIY project if I didn't have to go back to the store at least like 17 more times. So I'll do a cost analysis at the very end. I'm keeping all my receipts, so don't worry. Well, there she is, the first wall going up. Well, 
sort of going up. I still need to uh, make all the pocket holes, screws, and uh, glue it, and all that stuff. And then it can go up, eventually, when I'm done with all the other panels. Anyways, we're getting there. I've never used this stuff before, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'm not using a lot of it. I'm just, uh, let me see if I can show you. It's pretty sticky stuff. Just putting a little bit on there. I mean, I guess technically with Craig screws, you don't really need glue, but I like the insurance. I'm just going to do that a bunch more times and we're going to have a wall. Really at this point it's going to be rinse and repeat. I have to drill a bunch of holes, drive those pocket screws in, you know, use a little bit of glue. But you've seen one pocket hole, you've seen them all. So with that, as always, you guys be good. And definitely subscribe if you're not subscribed. Uh, drop me a like, all that good stuff. If you know anybody who's interested in this kind of stuff, let them know. Tell them to subscribe. All right, anyways, you guys, as always, be good. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> That's terrible. It's the most awkward. <sighs>